Welcome to New Hampshire Politics with John Burt. I'm John Burt. Thank you for joining me tonight. Tonight, I have to warn you, the show that I am going to do is about the Florida shoot-in. I want to warn you that there is a few graphic pictures that I'm going to show. Uh, n nothing of, you know, but it's on video games, uh, nothing about the shoot-in. Um, there's going to be videos that I'm going to show. I have five videos that I want to show. Uh, I am going to talk about Ironman teachers. So I just want to warn you up front that, you know, if, if I'm going to offend you, you know, there's other programs that you can watch. I hope you continue to watch my show uh, because what I'm going to say is something that needs to be said. So with that said, I'm going to start. And thank you for joining me uh, because what happened down there is a tragedy, just a tragedy. When I talk about that boy down there, uh, you know, that well, 19 uh, or 18 years old, um, you know, and it was February 2018 uh, is when the shooting happened down in Florida at this high school. Uh, you know, I do not know what went through his head. You know, I'm going to assume some stuff when I'm talking, but bottom line, I don't know. I just can't imagine, you know, the, the, what, you know what he was thinking other than, you know, according to, um, you know, the reports, uh, he wanted to be famous. Uh, he put out uh, some YouTube videos, if I remember right, or Facebook, I think it was YouTube, you know, saying that he was going to be famous and that he was going to shoot up schools. The FBI was even told, and nothing happened. But what are they doing on this situation? They want to take guns. It's gun control. Now, what I'm going to say, again, is very harsh. Um, most of my anti-gun friends um, that I have, you know, I really truly believe that they think they're doing the right thing. I disagree with them, and they believe that these shootings are just terrible, 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 terrible. But there's sadly some that know the price of these children that are dying is just the price of doing business. That's what a few of them think, because their agenda is gun control to the end. Remove guns from the law-abiding citizens. That is what they want. And there's a small group of those people out there. And like I said, most of the people that want gun-free zones and stuff like that, you know, they, they really believe that it works, but it doesn't. So what I want to do is I want to start right in on the videos because I got quite a few of them and I don't want to run out of time. Um, so I'm going to bring up video one and let me start it right now. All depends on the 15-year-old. I can tell you folks, I carried a gun all my life. I hunted, I, I shot. My friends and I, it's hunting season back home. When I was in high school, every one of those rigs in the high school parking lot had a gun in the gun rack. Why? We went hunting on the way home. None of those guns ever walked into a school. None of those guns ever shot anybody. What's the difference? Did the gun change? Or did you as a society change? Now, I'll give you I'll, give you odds that it was you as a society because you started glor glorifying cultures of violence. You glorified the gang culture. You glorified games that actually give you points for raping and killing people. Gun didn't change. We changed. But is it illegal for a father to provide the code to a, a gun safe to a 15-year-old? It's up to the, the, the father. There's no law in, in respect to that. Can you elaborate on your statements yesterday about the bullying situation? You know, about Mitch, I'm really trying to narrow that one down. We're getting some conflicting information on that. The more social media stuff we dig into, this looks more like this kid got enamored by the, uh, the school shooting culture. So it's possible he wasn't fully tied? We're still digging into that. But the more information we find, and you can find this, folks, all on, all on the Internet, you're as good as we are, if not better, pulling that stuff down. You know what you're starting to see. So maybe a All depends on the 15-year-old. I can tell you, folks. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, the sheriff was right. You know, it, it, it's not the gun. It is the culture that we live in today. And, and that is the problem. You know, the breaking down of the family, uh, removing God in school. I mean, you know, there's none of that anymore. You know, oh, I don't even know if you dare to say the G word in school today. You know, you'd be throwing out on your ear. Uh, but, you know, I remember, you know, I grew up in Bristol, Vermont. I remember guns in our school. You know, it wasn't a big deal. And like the officer said, none of those guns in those trucks or even in the school that we had in our lockers ever misbehaved. Not one. You know, it, it's just... It, no, he's 100% right on, on what he's talking about. And, and you know, and then sadly, there is a school shooting, um, you know, uh, Sigma out there that you know that he wanted to be you know this kid you know it's this is public knowledge that he just wanted to glorify you know what he did and you know but now he's going to pay the price you know you know sadly you know all those deaths you know it's just you know you know I I can't even say you know why why he would do that I can't even grab that but I'm going to bring up a picture number two or video two I'm sorry video two. And it's with uh, Diane Sawyer, and it's a really good video. Listen to what it is, and this is what I support is right here. Here it is. And this is an older video, but here it is. I'm going to start it right now. Conversation about gun violence in America, and a lot of you have been writing me that the fastest way to protect children in American schools is to make sure the principal and the teachers can have guns. We wanted to explore that, so we take you tonight to schools where the people trained to teach can also have weapons. Does it work? ABC News searches for solutions after the tragedy at Sandy Hook. And here's ABC's Alex Perez. In tiny Wichita Falls, Texas, as some students say, there's one thing that makes them feel safer. Their teachers are armed. I like it because it kind of makes me feel safer because, I mean, it's Harold. We don't have a police station here. Since 2007, the Harold School District allows teachers with concealed handgun licenses to carry guns in the classroom, a move the superintendent is convinced will prevent a school shooting here. My goal is if someone comes in to try to hurt my little ones, that, that they are killed. At Edison High School in Tulsa, Oklahoma, armed guards patrol the hallways. I would rather have it and never have to use it than not have it and run into a situation where I couldn't do my job fully. About 28,300 schools have armed security staff on campus, according to the National Center for Education Statistics. 20% of those primary schools, 54% middle schools, 68% of those high schools have armed security. And since the tragedy at Sandy Hook, lawmakers across the country now pushing a new solution to arm teachers in classrooms with guns. You should be able to carry your handgun anywhere in this state. I'd like to see more of that. Uh, you know, but this one armed guard, he said, um, you know, that they patrol the... Um, the hallways, well, the Florida shooting, you know, the school, there was two armed policemen there. The kid knew where they were. So he goes in another door. And you can lock that building down. You can. You know, I know our local schools are locked down and everything else, but you know what? Kids are in and out all day. You know, the guy just stands there and waits. You know, the school staff that is supposed to be monitoring this, they're swamped. You know, they don't have a designated person. And not that we want to pay for that either as taxpayers. And we don't want to pay for the police guy to be here because they'll just come in the back door and do their, their damage. Who can protect the, the uh, student is the person next to that student, and that is the willing, not forced, but the willing, trained, armed teacher. And the, until we decide that our children are above the anti-gun uh, culture out there, then we're going to keep having these school shootings. But eventually, we'll get sick of it. And they'll be saying, you know what, we do. Like some schools are already doing. They're arming the teachers. 
because they're the ones. And the will and teachers, and we have will and teachers right here locally and statewide and nationwide. There are teachers that are willing to do this to get the proper training and, and, and pull this off. It can be done. Uh, what's the next one? Oh yeah, the next one. This is Governor uh, Bevins. Uh, I think he's down in Kentucky. He's really good. And uh, let me bring that video up and I'm gonna start it right now. There has, from the beginning of time, been people who have perpetrated evil. And there's no amount of rules or laws. I mean, for those who think that gun control would have prevented this, we already have laws against murder. This is a person who murdered 58 people, last I knew, hundreds wounded. There are laws against all those things. So the idea that one more law would have precluded this person from doing this is an asinine comment. It really is. And I've heard it from so many people. And for those who are trying to politicize this, I think it's a shame. This is a time when our nation, understandably, uh, has been rocked by this. And I think it's an opportunity for us to come together and talk about why the divisiveness is so celebrated by so many uh, for sometimes no good reason. Uh, we need to be more united. He's absolutely right. Um, it, it is shameful. And of course, you know, I have my Democrat friends, uh, some, not all, because there's a lot of pro-Democrats in New Hampshire. Uh, but there's some of them up to the state house right here in New Hampshire that are screaming for gun control, you know, bump stocks and everything else. And again, you know, like the sheriff said, it's not the gun, it's the culture. So I don't see us changing the culture, which I would prefer. I'd prefer to go back to when I was a kid. Um, you know, if I misbehaved, like my mother said, you know, if you, you know, she, <laughs> it was funny too. I was scared to death of my mother. You know, I loved my mother and she loved me. But I don't know if kids are scared of their parents today. My mother told me, she says, you listen here. And she looked right at me sternly. You embarrass the name. I don't care if it's your fault, their fault, or nobody's fault. You are dead when you get home. And I'll tell you, I think my mother would have done it. <laughs> you, know, you know, she did. You know, <laughs> you know, she knew what the switch was for. And uh, she said she showed her love through it, and I think she loved me out of the five kids the most. But, uh, you know, but I'm telling you, we aren't going to change the culture. So how do we protect these kids? Arm the teachers. And uh, there is something on WCX. Hopefully I got time to talk about it. But I want to get some of these videos aside, and then I'll talk a little more. Um, I'm going to bring up number four because, oh, yes, this is the great, I love this video. Um, ABC, CNN, of course, you know, some of the others, I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure that they all reported how we have 18 shootings. And this is uh, the middle of February in uh, 2018. And, you know, they're screaming that we have uh, 18 shootings. Well, listen to this guy, and, and he's absolutely right. I checked into some of it, and, and he is spot on. And uh, I'm going to bring up video four, and I'm going to start it right now. There's a group called Everytown. Everytown is a gun control group. And Everytown said that there were 18 school shootings in the month of January. Now, you may be wondering, why didn't I hear about those school shootings every single day? The answer is because there were not 18 school shootings in the month of January. There were more like three. Okay, even one is terrible. But there were no mass school shootings. And the, and the ones that exist are bad enough without you having to blow it up to 18. Right? We can go through them. Right? ABC News said there were 18 school shootings in the first 45 days of 2018, according to Everytown. And New York Daily News said the same thing. But that's not true. Okay, twice, so they counted these, these as gun incidents on campus. Twice, someone shot themselves on a school grounds. One incident on January 3rd featured a man shooting himself in a former school's parking lot. On January 10th, a teen killed himself in an Arizona elementary school bathroom. Okay, that is not a school shooting. That is a school suicide. Okay, four times, a bullet was fired through a school or dorm's window. A gunshot on January 4th was fired at a high school in Seattle through an office window. No one was hurt. On January 10th, a shot was fired shattering a California University classroom window. No injuries reported. The same day in Texas, a bullet was accidentally fired through a classroom wall at the Grayson College Criminal Justice Center. No one injured. On January 15th, a bullet traveled through a residential hall's dorm room. No injuries reported. On January 25th, a mobile Alabama high school student fired a gun on campus. No injuries. On January 26th, shots were, shots were fired from a car in a parking lot. No injuries. On February 5th, a third grader pulled the trigger on a cop's gun. No one was injured. On February 8th, a shot was fired inside Metropolitan High School. No one was injured. Okay, there have only been a few cases in which someone was injured other than the shooter. 
January 22nd in Texas, a teenage girl was wounded by shots from a semi-automatic handgun. At the same day, a 14-year-old boy was injured in a shooting in, uh, in Gentilly, Louisiana. February 1st, five children were injured in an accidental shooting, so that's not even a purposeful shooting, it's accidental. And finally, on February 5th, a teenager was shot and injured outside of high school. There are only three deadly shootings, uh, apparently, in the last 45 days, so that is still awful. Every one of these is awful. Every one of these is tragic and terrible and, and an act of evil. That does not mean that 18 happened, so I think that it's just important to get the statistic correct. Like this is the, you wonder why the people don't trust the media? It's because the media don't bother to do any of this. They just give you the bottom line, 18 school shootings. And then the minute you dig into it, you realize there were not 18 school shootings, there were three. Yeah. So there's our mainstream media telling us that there's 18, but when you dig into it, there's not. You know, why do they lie to us? In, in every town, is that what it was? Yeah, every town, uh, uh, it, it, I mean, it is known that they're an anti-gun and they want our guns. It has nothing to do with safety. You know, anybody that belongs to uh, every town, uh, I mean, they are just an extreme anti-gun group. You know, and like I said, there's a lot of people out there that think we need gun control. Um, they're, in my eyes, they're misguided, but they have a good heart. They think they're doing the right thing. Um, but this every town, if you belong to that group, you're in the extreme group, and, and their agenda is just to remove guns. They want to be like Australia and remove our guns. And look at the mess down there. Down in Venezuela, as they re removed all the guns. I mean, it's just a mess down there. Uh, I'm going to bring up the last video just to talk about, uh, to get the videos out of the way. And this is the last one. It's only about a minute long. Um, so let me bring this one up. And, and this one, I'm going to have some good talking after this. Listen to the last guy right at the end when he says, talks about the teachers. I mean, it, I, I, when I saw this, I was like, really? You know, wait till you hear this. And uh, here it comes. I'm going to start it right now. Right now, Arkansas is definitely the NRA's favorite state because uh, Clarksville High School in Arkansas is going to be arming 20 teachers, administrators, and staff. Yeah, they're giving them 1100 bucks each to purchase a handgun and a holster. They're going to get training, and we will have armed teachers in the school. This is completely bonkers, but... Let's talk about it anyway. Um, what, a, what a great learning environment. What? What a, yeah. like, what a terrific way to prime your brain for new information. The, yeah, the constant <laughs> fear of, of gun violence. Now, I, you know, I, I, you could argue that those kids are already living under the constant threat of gun violence, but, but it at least could be... Wait, how could you argue that? What, what because gun violence? people do break into schools. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, schools. yeah. Uh, but I mean, at least y you could think of that as theoretical. Now right. these kids know that there are actual guns in the schools with their teachers who they don't necessarily trust. What do you say to this guy? The teachers that the kids don't trust? I don't know any kids that don't trust their teacher. We got great teachers in this country. Especially here in New Hampshire, right here in Govstown, we got good teachers. I think our students look up to our teachers. So when you have this guy talking about it, you know, like, you know, their kids, I mean, I was just, are you serious? But then he says, by the teachers having the guns, I mean, what is he inferring? That, you know, the teachers are going to shoot the kids? That's never going to happen. Uh, I really don't know who these guys were. It was just a video I came up on. And, I, and the reason I wanted to show it to you was just to show you what the other side, the extreme. You know, I'm assuming they're anti-gun because that's the way it sounded. You know, that teacher um, that was down in Florida, he threw himself on some students to save them. And I believe he did. He saved students you know, children that had moms and dads. He saved those kids by throwing his own body. Could you imagine, and he was a trained uh, security person too, could you imagine if he had a gun, what he could have done? He could have shot, even if he missed that kid, he could have shot, hopefully hit the kid. That kid in most shooters, from the videos and news and everything I've studied on, they're cowards. 
That's why they're going to gun-free zones. They're cowards. So by that teacher shooting at that kid would have put him down. He would have went, oh my God, this isn't a gun-free zone. I thought I had free reign until the police came. No, that teacher could have saved a lot of students. So, the, 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 so I just wanted to put that out there. Oh, and another thing I just want to bring it up real quick is let me bring up the pictures too. Um, here's a little boy uh, playing videos. Uh, there, a lot of people are talking about this is part of the cause, you know, the breakdown of society, divorce, medications. How many kids are on meds today? A ton of them. I guarantee you I wasn't. That sheriff that spoke that the gun didn't change. It was society that changed. We're drugging our kids left and right. And this is the disturbing picture that I wanted to show you and I warned you at the beginning. So if you don't want to see it, you know, look away. But here's this little boy. And then let me get rid of this picture and I want to bring up the next video or the next picture of a video. This is what kids are playing. And I only want to leave this up for just a little bit because when I look at this, it, it's disturbing to me that this is what our kids see every day why they're um, you know, playing their video games. Uh, and I'm, I'm assuming not all video games are like this, but um, and, uh, you know, so I'm going to just take this picture down because I just look at it and I go, you know, I, it's disturbing to see what our society's gone to. But we have to. And, and the reason I wanted to talk about uh, WCAX, um, you know, there was a teacher there that's going to, and this is in Vermont, uh, he's going up to the state house and calling for more gun control in Vermont. And, and Vermont is the second safest place in the world. It is the safest place and has been for almost ever the safest place in the United States. New Hampshire is, you know, anywhere from three to four. Sometimes we, I think we've hit five. Uh, but most of the time we're three or two. Sometimes we're right behind New Hampshire. And then Maine's another state that we're safe. We have constitutional carry. We have a right to carry guns in our schools right here. Uh, Maine and uh, Vermont doesn't, but in, in New Hampshire they can. Uh, but I put on there when he was calling for this, I said, you know, the next shoot, a, a shooting in Vermont, if it happens, the blood is on that guy's hands. And boy, did a lot of people write back, you know, saying that I was wrong for doing it. Some wrote back saying I was right because he wants to take guns away from law-abiding citizens. That isn't the problem. And now lastly, what I want to talk about is I was over in Pembroke, uh, you know, up in that area. My wife and I, we went for, um, uh, you know, yard sale and we went on Elm Street there, Antiques on Elms. And we're just driving around to all these different stores and they're pretty cool. And, you know, we find chicken stuff. That's what we're after because we have chickens. I saw a guy and he had some Trump stickers for sale and some other stuff. And um, there was a senator that was a Republican. And I said, well, do you know Senator so-and-so? And he says, I do. So I'm thinking, you know, that he's, he's on our side, you know, for pro-gun. Well, I explained about a bill that I have in to allow you to have... Uh, guns on an ATV and on a snowmobile. And he says, well, why would you do that? Well, he was, and then we got talking about the school shooting. When he told me this, he says, we need more signs. And I go, signs aren't going to do this. He says, no, John, because I introduced myself. He says, they will. And, and if somebody saw that kid coming toward that school, they should have went out of that school and said, whoa, 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 you're not coming in here. He, he was actually thinking that this would work. And I'm sitting there going, well, my wife, she wanted to just get into the debate with him. And I said, you know what? He believes what he believes. I'm not going to argue with the guy. So I said, sir, you know, have a nice day. And, you know, we, we cordially left. And I grabbed my wife's hand before she got talking because she really, I think she wanted to rip this guy one. And I was just shocked that he really believed that if somebody saw this kid coming up to that high school and go out and say, excuse me, you're not going in with that gun. It's a gun-free zone. That he would have listened. He actually believes that. I'm telling you, that's just ludicrous. So anyways, I, I, I thank you for watching this show and um, you know, send me your thoughts on what you think uh, because bottom line, we have to.
if we want to save our children, we have to, you know, arm our teachers. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next week. Bye now.